President Biden telling Iran to, quote, be careful in his first direct warning since Hamas attacked Israel. Secretary Blinken is on the ground in Israel this morning. We will bring you there live coming up. The administration so far has been unable to say there is any direct link to Iran. Here's Fox News White House correspondent Jackie Heinrich pressing NSC spokesperson John Kirby on Iran's involvement. Watch. What is it? What do you consider to be a direct link? So what I'm referring to there is um, any, any evidence that we have that they were knowledgeable of and aware of these particular attacks. But we haven't seen anything that tells us they knew specifically date, time, method, you know, that they were that they were witting to, to this. Um, it, we haven't seen anything that tells us they specifically cut checks to support this set of attacks or that they were involved in the training. Tiana Lowe, Desher, uh, thanks for joining us, ladies. Good to see you both. Mark Tepper, thank you so much. I, I got to get your take here because this administration is having such a hard time admitting that Iran is behind this. And why? <laughs> Well, they've, they've invested too much into it, right? right this is why it. you have John Kerry in that administration. It's why there was that blockbuster semaphore report that showed that Iranian intelligence had infiltrated this government at the highest levels. And now they cannot admit what that Wall Street Journal report proved over the weekend, right? The IRGC signed off on this attack in Beirut. There was no way that they could have done this without the money. And look, I get that the direct U.S. dollars may not have been used to fund this attack, but we all understand this funding is fungible, which is why you have John Tester up for a difficult race in Montana, why you have Joe Manchin, who's holding on through the skin of his teeth to that seat in West Virginia. It's why you have these Democrats saying, we need to reimpose a freeze. And even if we do reimpose a freeze, there's no guarantee that Qatar will actually help us freeze it. That's Going right. forward, we That's need to exactly take a right. look at what the EU is doing in blocking any future humanitarian aid to Palestine and especially to Iran. I, I, I think we have to be careful to understand it's not just the $6 billion. Oh, no. Okay? It's the appeasement from day one of this yep. administration. Exactly. Without a doubt. Allowing all of that black oil, the, the oil on the black market, uh, easing sanctions. It's all supportive of Iran so, since this president walked into the Oval Office. Since you just mentioned oil, one thing is true if you go back over the last 20 years or so, and that's whenever oil approaches $100 a barrel, there are aggressive geopolitical moves that happen. You can go back to August of 2008, mm. Russia into Georgia, February of 13, Russia into Crimea, 22, into Ukraine, wow. right? So every single time, and Brent hit uh, 97 bucks on September 27th, Brent crude. So that, what that does is that funds these terrorist nations, and it gives them an opportunity to make these aggressive moves. Now, with regards to us pretending like we didn't know about this, and there was no, there's no direct evidence linking Iran, there was a Wall Street Journal article from April 14th of this year, a Wall Street Journal exclusive from Summer Said, uh, saying that Iran's top general, General Kani, who succeeded Soleimani, was holding clandestine meetings with Hamas, Hezbollah and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad to talk about launching a fresh wave of attacks against Israel. You are telling us that that our reporters have better intelligence sources yeah. than, than the CIA. Well, like, I mean, the, the journal wrote it yesterday, and they had specific meeting times. The yep. fact that yes. they have been planning this, yeah. and Iran was aware and sort of blessed it in, in, ter in terms of moving forward. I mean, how is it possible that the Wall Street Journal has all of these facts and our State Department can't even find a direct link? And it seems like they did more than just bless it. They organized the meetings. Right. I mean, I mean, how else do you do you penetrate that perimeter into Israel, right? I, I don't think people understand that that was the Iron Dome actually working, that level of fatality, right? Yeah. So imagine if there was no Iron Dome to protect them. That's how big of a security failure it was. And there will be a reckoning within Israel and Israeli intelligence, how they dropped the ball on this. But again, the U.S. deserves a little bit of fault, too, because we're supposed to be intel partners. Yeah. We're and, supposed to be uh, share spy networks. Yeah. I agree with that. And listen, we have all seen the photos, the videos. Oh. I am a mother of two young daughters, and I have seen things that I cannot unsee. And we know. all know and have to take acknowledgement that there was only one way Hamas was able to do those horrific attacks. I mean, the, the videos online are just unbearable. 
it's, it's, it's unbearable. Jackie Heinrich also pressed John Kirby about the administration's intelligence failure, which you just noted. Watch. This was a massive intelligence failure. <clears throat> Who bears responsibility for that? You know something, Jackie? There's going to come a time when it's appropriate for us to take a look back retrospectively and see what the intel picture showed us or didn't show us, um, whether there's any gaps that need to be closed. And I suspect that our Israeli counterparts will do the same thing. Now's not that time. It's just not that time. Your reaction. How much confidence can we possibly have in our, our own intelligence right now? I, I mean, we didn't notice the Chinese spy balloon until it was in the middle of our country. Such in the middle point. of our such country. A, such a good point. It, it was in the middle of the they country. They actually did see it, but they let it go. Yeah, yeah. They pretended <laughs> no, like they no, didn't no, no, see no, it. It's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We and, know. We, they, they've said we have saw it coming in. Right. And we've talked about the, the wide open border. There's yes. a bunch of 30-year-old men crossing that border every single and day. And not just from oh. South American countries. Right. We have Correct. Russian nationals. We have Chinese Chinese nationals. We have Afghan well, nationals. We had a list of all of the people who were coming mm -hmm. from the Middle East yes. yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, we had 150 uh, people on the terrorist watch yes. list. Yes. In this year alone. Yep. Yeah, this isn't about Rothbardian economics or even just the depletion of our social safety net, which we've obviously seen that's what those blue cities are responding to, yeah. right, where they have these highly fungible liquid social safety nets that are just being drained. It's literally a national security risk, yeah. you know, and luckily I do think culturally speaking, we share a lot more in common with, you know, the Catholic South Americans than Europe has historically shared with, you know, let's say with Hamas, yeah. you're dealing with medieval terrorists, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's still the security.